Yes, yes, now it is straight. Okay. طيب الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله من بعد إن نزغ الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي بمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر المول محدثات وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضائف النار زاكم الله خير بدرس arranging for this lecture uh, إن شاء الله I will not take long time few minutes بإذن الله Uh, number one, when we speak about the da'wah, it is very important to bear in mind the sincerity. You should work for fi sabilillah. This is very important for, of course, for any Muslim and specifically for those who are involved in da'wah. Why you are calling people to Islam, why you are telling them about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about the truth, it should be sincere. I mean, your attention should be sincere. This was the clear title of all the messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam. لا أسألكم عليه أجرا لا أسألكم عليه مانا I'm not working for money to make money not I'm not working to for, for fame to make more followers than my you know my Facebook and Instagram these things no I'm working for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the main thing is you to accept to know the haq and to follow the haq this should be very clear for the da'iyah okay if this is very clear for you then I don't care if people, I don't mean I don't care, but I, I'm not sad that people follow me or not. Why? Because I'm doing my job for the sake of Allah. Nuh alayhi salatu wa sallam walked in da'wah for how many years? 950 years. At the end, how many, follow, how many people followed him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَا آمَنَ مَعَهُ إِلَّا قَلِيلٌ Just a few people followed Nuh alayhi salatu wa sallam. For how many years you are working da'wah? 100, 200 years? Well, in da'wah, maybe one or two or ten years. Nuh was working in da'wah, how many years? 950 years. How many, how many people followed him? Allah said, few. His son, his son, did not follow him. Okay? Why he did not follow him? Because Nuh was not going, doing a good da'wah? No. Nuh did perfect da'wah. His da'wah was perfect. He did not join any course of da'wah, okay, here or there in the Gulf. Or, he got the da'wah, from, the da'wah techniques from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wahi. So he did perfect da'wah. But the hidayah, the guidance, from where? From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hayyakum Allah, alaykum salam. Innaka la tahdi man ahbabta, walakin Allah yahdi man yasha. Okay, you cannot guide, which means you make them to accept Islam, those who you like, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides those who he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the issue of guidance in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in our hands. So don't be sad if you work, work hard. Maybe sometimes you have a conversation for one hour, two hours, one day, two days, and maybe sometimes years for years. One of your relatives, you are calling him. Your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, one of the cousins, you are giving da'wah for years. He's not accepting Islam. Yes, he's not accepting Islam because I am a bad da'i. No, doesn't mean not necessary. Yes, it can be because you are not following the correct way of da'wah. But sometimes the mistake from his side, he doesn't want to follow the haq. So if your intention was sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you should not be sad. That people follow you or not follow you, not following you. So, uh, to evaluate your da'wah, my da'wah is good or not, it doesn't depend on the number of people give shahada. Okay, because sometimes, yeah, and for example, in Kuwait, we have centers of da'wah. Okay, our center, 100 people within one month. The other center, 2,000. Uh, so we are very bad in da'wah. No, it doesn't, not necessary. Not necessary, it means you are bad in da'wah. So it is very important that you are sincere in your da'wah. You are calling people for the sake of Allah, like the messengers. Your the, the big title, we are calling people for the sake of Allah. We are not asking people money. I don't call people to make more followers. So this helps you to have the peace, tranquility, the security in your heart that, that I am okay. If I am following the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is the next point. Uh, da'wah uh, is like the salah. 
how how you are praying when i start to pray allahu akbar i raise my hands and i say allahu akbar i should recite fatha i go to ruku i say subhan okay why you are following these steps because i am praying like the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the same thing in da'wah you should follow the way of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam da'wah why because it is the best way nothing is better than the way of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when you read the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you can learn the way of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam da'wah and this is the best way the perfect way perfect way the way of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we need the examples from the authentic sunnah and this is very important i will not say from the sunnah the authentic sunnah because you know there are many not authentic hadith in the seerah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it is enough for us to know the authentic sunnah and alhamdulillah the scholars made it easy for us to know what is authentic what is not authentic so for example when you come to the hadith of muad radiyallahu ta'ala an he sent muad uh, to yemen he said radiyallahu ta'ala he said innaka ta'ti qawman ahl kitab oh muad you are going to people of the book okay ahl kitab people of the book so uh, the scholars say here which means be careful muad you should be well prepared which means they have knowledge so you should prepare yourself by having knowledge so it is very important for the da'i to seek knowledge they like what kind of knowledge i should seek the priority is the pillars of islam the pillars of iman shahadatan as-salah zakah as-siyam al-hajj and pillars of iman to min billah malaikat wa kutub wa rusul wa al-yawm al-akhir wa al-qadr It is very important for any Muslim, and specifically for the da'iyah, to know what are the pillars of Islam and the pillars of Iman. I should know about the salah. Imagine, if you don't have the knowledge of zakah, right? you don't have the knowledge of zakah. So someone is, uh, likes to know about Islam. Okay, tell me about Islam, you tell him about the shahada. Okay, you tell him about the shahada. You tell him about the salah. Okay, when you come to the zakah, yes, you have to pay zakah. how much 50% every month imagine if you don't know right so it is not nice if you tell him i don't know and also it will be very bad if you tell him something wrong yes you have to pay 25% every month but imagine if you have the knowledge of zakah they right? that yes you have to pay the zakah but the zakah it is once a year and it is 2.5% and it is if you have the th- more than the threshold you were 85 grams of pure gold imagine if you explain him this way he will be very happy ah so this it is not like the taxes every month yes, it is not like taxes taxes is a punishment but the zakat is a p- ibadah it is a purification allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says khud min amwalihim sadaqatan tutahhiruhum wa tuzakkihum biha take from their wealth a zakat why to tahhiruhum to purify them wa tuzakkihum biha to purify them and their wealth so imagine if you explain to them the zakah based on the proofs quran and sunnah imagine if you don't have knowledge fasting you have to fast refrain from food different than when you explain them in, in the in the way according to the quran and sunnah so It is very important for the da'i to seek knowledge from the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, of course I don't mean that you should stay in the College of Medina for 20 years you seek knowledge. But as a, as a, as a da'i, you should keep your own uh, uh, يعني, time to seek knowledge. So خلاص, alhamdulillah, nowadays if you have a sheikh here, for example, so you attend as a class. to learn the aqidah, to learn the fiqh, to learn the seerah, to learn the tafsir, to learn the akhlaq. If it is not available, you try to, you travel here, there to seek knowledge. If it is difficult, not available, okay. You should have your own YouTube list, okay. So this, this sheikh, of course, you should be a good sheikh, uh, following the Quran and Sunnah. You learn the seerah, you learn the fiqh, you learn the aqidah. Okay, you have your own book. And now there's, alhamdulillah, there are many, you know, colleges online colleges scholars alhamdulillah but of course the main thing the main thing to seek knowledge physically offline it is very important you know brothers to have direct contact with the sheikh 
This is very important. You see the sheikh. The sheikh sees you. You know the sheikh. The sheikh knows you. You, you ask him and he asks you. You know, the point of online. Okay, now, how many people was, are watching the, uh, the video? I don't know. Maybe some people are watching the video and they are chatting, having their, their coffee, having their tea, having maybe, you know, sometimes two mobiles, one mobile, one lecture, the other mobile football match. You know, yeah, and sometimes I give a lecture in Kuwait for the Kuwaiti brothers. Okay? I'm talking uh, honey, uh, about the aqidah or whatever the, the issue, and he's watching the match. <laughs> he missed. <coughs> Subhanallah, I am on one side and he's the other side. So it is very important to have physical uh, lectures, yani, if you can, again, I'm repeating if you, if you can. So seeking knowledge is very important. So the Prophet said, the same hadith he said, you call them, number one, Allah. You call them for tawheed, to worship Allah alone. Then salah, then zakah. So what is the meaning here? The priorities. Number one, you should Make sure that the aqidah is clear for them and correct. Next to that, the salah. Next to that, the zakah. So it should be clear for the da'i. What are the priorities? You have the list. Number one, more important than number two. Number two, more important than number three. It should be clear for the da'i. Right? Okay, what is the point that these things are clear for me? I know from where to start. I know which point I should emphasize. يعني, I, I, يعني, it should not, I should not argue with some, someone about clipping the fingers, the, the, the nails. Okay, no doubt, this is sunnah. But you fight with someone who is not Muslim about clipping the, the, the nails or trimming the, the, the hair. I mean, you go to the basics. Or you talk about the etiquettes of eating after you finish the, the meal, you lick your fingers. I mean, he doesn't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he disbelieves in uh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, go to the main points so it should be clear for uh, the da'iyah. Uh, one of the important, very important points, of course, the basics and the principles of da'wah, al-hikmah, the wisdom. Allah says, Ud'u la sabiri rabbika bil hikmati wal mawridati al hasana And always I like to mention the word hikmah. Because sometimes people think that I should be lenient in da'wah, very soft. Like this, wrong. Why? Because sometimes I should be uh, yani angry, I should be tough. How, well, of course, what do I mean by tough? The example. Uh, one hadith, you find the Prophet ﷺ was very lenient and soft with a man who urinated in the masjid. Okay. Now, Imagine if there is now in the masjid someone urinating in the masjid. What we are going, what we are doing, what we are going to do with this man? Maybe you are going to kill this man. Taib, urinating in the masjid is major sin. Taib. Uh, another example: someone praying and making the salah too long. Isha salah one hour or two hours. Isha salah. Taib. Come to the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How was the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam treating uh, people there? The first example, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was very soft with the man who urinated in the masjid, and he was tough sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or he was angry with the man who prolonged the salah. The first example was a Bedouin man. He is not familiar with the rules in Medina. So the Prophet was soft. Come, why you urinate in the masjid? For me, it is the same. The masjid outside the masjid. He's a new the Medina, and maybe he was a new Muslim. So the Prophet explained him. Okay, no, the masjid, it is a place of salah, Quran, not for urinating. So he explained him. Why? Because he doesn't know. While the second hadith, Mu'ad, and Mu'ad was a scholar. And he was a strong Muslim, radiallahu ta'ala an. So he was very angry with her. Oh, Mu'ad, afatan wa antiya Mu'ad? Are you causing fitna for the Muslims? So I should know how to treat people. When to be 
soft and when to be tough or angry. Yes, basically, I should be soft, lenient. The Prophet ﷺ said, Okay, kindness, softness, okay. If it, is in, if it is there, it will make the things nice. But no doubt there are exceptions, as we mentioned in Hadith Mu'ad. Why? The Prophet, number one, the Prophet ﷺ was tough with Mu'ad. Why? Because he trusts Mu'ad that he is a strong believer. He will not run away from Islam. And also because his mistake can make people run away from the masjid. And this happened in another hadith. One man came to the Prophet ﷺ saying, Oh, so Allah, I come late to the masjid because of the Imam. He recites long surah, so I come at the end of the salah or at the end of the rakah. So why this man comes joins the salah late? Because of the wrong practice of the Imam. So I mean, this is under the wisdom. So the da'iyah should be very wise. And of course, wisdom needs knowledge. You cannot be wise without knowledge. And the wisdom comes from the knowledge and experience. Knowledge and experience. Subhanallah, usually those who are in da'wah, at the beginning they do mistakes. But after Three, four years, yeah, for example, if I'm joining you, this is the first day for me in da'wah. Yalla, we go to the masjid, maybe I, I, I tell you, yalla, let's talk to this man. You tell me, no, wait. Let's sit down. You tell me, let's go. Why? Because I don't have experience and you know better. How? Because you have experience. This is good time. This is not good time. It is the right person to speak now. This is not the right person to... to... So knowledge with experience, you can't you can get the 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 other wisdom. Uh, it is also important for for the da'i uh, to 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 be a good Muslim. It is very very important for a da'i good Muslim. What do I mean by a good Muslim? Are you praying on time? What about Fajr Salah? Okay, or you are walking da'wah late meetings here there. And the Fajr Salah, always at home. You don't pray in the masjid. Or most of the time you pray in Fajr after sunrise. No, this is a big problem. You have to correct yourself. What and how? Number one, you're, of course, your Aqidah. And practically your Salah. Okay, what about yourself? Are you good practicing Muslim? Are you practicing Islam in a proper way? Are you practicing the etiquettes of Islam, the manners of salah, the manners of the food, the manners of the guest, and these things? This is very important, brothers. Be careful. I should be a good Muslim before giving da'wah to people. Give da'wah to yourself. This is very important. Don't forget. No, Allah. Don't forget yourself. Allah says in the Quran, "Ya amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum." Yourself. And your family. So he mentioned yourself before your family. And all of what they mention when you travel, okay, they, they make it a demo that if there is emergency, if there is mask, and you have a child, you fix the mask for yourself or for the, your child first. Yourself. So give that one yourself first. Why? Because if you are alive, then you can help your son or daughter. But if you try with your son, okay, he will remove the mask, he will put it wrong way, and you struggle with him, then you will die. Why? Because you don't have ox- oxygen. But imagine if your salah is perfect, your hajj is perfect, your siyam perfect, and qiyamul layl. And this is a very important point. You as a da'i, you should, you should practice qiyamul layl. This is very important. I mean the night prayer. This is your honor. Your honor, the honor of the Muslim, Qiyam al Layl. Okay, how come a da'i doesn't have Qiyam al Layl for five minutes, ten minutes more or less? Tayyib, there should be a portion of your night for the salah. Okay, maybe you are spending your night in chatting or planning for da'wah. Jazakallah, it is very good. 
to learn this very good but don't forget your soul because you you you, you need what is the food of your soul and your spirit that i mean ruh the qiyam al layl the athkar the quran it's very important dhikr so you should not ignore that it should be part of your life qiyam al layl the dhikr the quran this is very important this is different than seeking knowledge uh, also uh, one of the important points in da'wah the yani being easy with your colleagues try to be easy cooperative helpful flexible this is this is very important and patient hey, don't think that if you are here in the da- i work in da'wah you are 10 people 20 people don't think that all of us will agree upon every single point the scholars did not agree <laughs> upon every single point so try to be flexible of course within border within the يعني, of course i don't don't mean that someone is suggesting something haram okay to be flexible yalla okay let's offer people wine to track them to islam no of course i don't mean that they I, I mean flexible yeah, for, for example order food <coughs> from this restaurant or that restaurant you should not care about the food the problem sometimes you find muslims fighting because of the tea or coffee from this restaurant or from that coffee with sugar or without sugar habibi this is not our aim this is not our goal our goal is to invite people to islam to raise la ilaha illallah right so you know sometimes the issues the time the date the place right if it's, it doesn't matter you accept mention your opinion if you find the other side insisting resisting you accept yes sometimes it is uh, less profits more loss loss okay but inshallah for next time it will be a lesson for him yani the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam i mentioned i think this example yesterday the uh, prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in one of the battles decided because they were surrounding a, a fortress and it was strong they tried maybe one time two times three times but they could not defeat the enemy the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told the army khalas tomorrow you are leaving so some of them come say how come rasulullah we leave without the victory we should defeat them fi sabilillah yani they, they are hard fi sabilillah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam okay so tomorrow morning they start uh, yani they tried one more So afternoon what they what he noticed injuries we could not enter the fortress and we had some injuries so after that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said tomorrow we are leaving then everyone was silent the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam smiled why he said i told you from yesterday you did not agree with me What do I mean? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave them the chance, and he is Rasulullah. You are not Rasulullah. He he is Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but he was flexible with them, and there was some loss. You got my point. So try to be flexible. You know, sometimes you find people, subhanallah, very close-minded. If you tell them, let's buy milk, no, we buy juice. خلاص. This is the end of the life. Habibi, milk or juice, yalla, give us water. Save water. It's okay. Tayyib, so it doesn't matter. This or that. As I said, yani, uh, and this is again, I'm repeating the importance of knowledge. How to be flexible. How to, when to compromise. Because without knowledge, sometimes you compromise and you fall into something haram. So be careful. Uh, also uh, something يعني, in, in, in the da'wah you need to provide something for people the invited people okay you invite people to islam or you invite people who are not practicing to practice so do you have a place for them to continue okay you spoke to someone he accepted islam alhamdulillah next point he should learn 
how to pray, how to make wudu, and he should he should improve his Islam, or I mean his religion, his taq taqwa. So, do you have? Uh, can you provide something for them to continue? Yani I remember one Islamic center in Kuwait. They are giving da'wah to the non-Muslims. Okay, Jazakumullah khair, very good, no doubt. So I, I asked the boss of that center, what you do after Islam? Okay, yani, what is the program after Islam lectures? He said, nothing. How nothing? He said, we don't have something planned, but if they ask, we answer. Yeah, I mean, this is not right. Yeah, you, you did a good job. You explained him Islam and he accepted Islam. He said the Shahada. But the next step also is very important. And it, if you are a center, you should provide something for them. Online, offline. I know it is, it is difficult for many people to provide them something offline. Okay, we have the class. Every, every Saturday or every Sunday or every day from 5 to 6. Do you think that people can attend? No. Most of people cannot attend. So you should provide something uh, flexible. Uh, uh, it's okay for them to attend. And also this is one of the points of da'wah. Think how to make it easy for people. This is very important. This is the next point. How to make it easy for people. Uh, for example, I, I, I have a class every day, sorry, every Saturday after Fajr. Alhamdulillah, I started this class maybe from 2008. Okay, it was before the hour, but we shift to after Fajr, immediately after Fajr. Okay, and Alhamdulillah, we finished some books and now, Alhamdulillah, we are going the tafsir, we finished Surah Fatih, Al-Baqarah, Ali Umran, and now we are almost at the end of Surah Nisa. So some people knew, brothers, okay, why after Fajr? I told them, we tried to make it after Dhuhr, just before Dhuhr, but at the end, the best time, the Fajr. Why? Because, you know, in Kuwait, Friday and Saturday off. So to make it Friday after Fajr, or after Jum'ah, or after, usually people take the family, and they do their shopping on Jum'ah. So we, we can do it Saturday. Okay, why Saturday? Not, why it is not after Dhuhr? Because some people also, they are working Saturday. The only off date is Friday. And we cannot make it after Maghrib because it is late and, and it will be the sc tomorrow school. So khalas, it, if, if it is uh, good for most of people, look, I'm saying most of you because Difficult to make it possible for all people. Difficult. Yani, almost impossible. If you have a number, yeah, for example, you have a number of 20, 30 people. So try to make your da'wah, your time for people. What people can attend, when people can attend. Not for your schedule. Okay? Because you are calling people for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you try to uh, adjust your time according to what they can. Sheikh, this is difficult. I know this is difficult. This is not easy. But the reward, inshallah, will be more. You are seeking the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because, you know, this is one of the problems in the da'wah centers, some da'wah centers in Kuwait. Uh, some da'i, they work from, according to the time of the da'wah center. Morning from 8 to 12. Afternoon from 4 to 8, from Sunday to Thursday. And I remember contacting one uh, that was sister for females. So we need a woman, because sometimes a female likes to give, to, to give the shahada. And for the maids who are working at home, it's uh, the, good, the best time for them Friday in the morning. So we're coming to the da'wah center. Before the Jum'ah. So I come to the da Dawah Center 10 a.m. We give the Shahada, we give the books. Then I go to the Jum'ah Khutbah. Or maybe immediately after the Jum'ah Khutbah. So we call one sister who is helping us in Dawah. So she came one time, two times, three times. Then she said, sorry. Please, if you want me to help you, 
it should be within the working hours. My working hours from Sunday to Thursday from 2. You know, also, this is one of, one of the problems of, yeah, I cannot blame the sister. I cannot, no, it should be for the sake of Allah. I cannot, especially women. Maybe she is married and she has a mother, and, or maybe she doesn't have someone to drop her. I cannot. So it is very important to make your da'wah يعني, in a good time for the da'i uh, people. Uh, I think I will stop now. And, uh, if you have questions, inshallah. Sakhm al khair, salli Allah, salli Allah, Muhammad. I have a question, inshallah. You mentioned regarding the piano lay. Yeah, bismillah. Uh, my question is, I heard that sleeping on is more often more important, like more important than sleeping. So my question is like, if a person is like busy in the day and then he has time at night, mm. so which does he prioritize, like sleeping knowledge or camel leg? He can do both. He can do both. He can do qiyam al and to seek knowledge. Imam Ahmed was one of the scholars. He said, with the ink pot until the grave. So no doubt he was a scholar and he was a student of knowledge. But he was praying. Yeah, and some of them mentioned he was praying 100 rak'ah. So you know, sometimes the shaitan comes to you telling, no, 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 stay with the books and read books. Don't pray because reading the books is more important. Seek knowledge. You can do both. You can do both. You mentioned it, the piano leg, it could be like five, ten minutes, then it has to be like one hour, two hours. Yes, yes. Qiyam al can be one rakah, can be three rakah, can be five rakah, eleven rakah. Yani, the Prophet وسلم, said, if you if you recite ten ayat, you will not be registered as heedless. Ten ayat. So imagine you recite Surah Al Fatiha, in Na'atayna Kawthar, Surah Al Fatiha, seven ayat. Uh, three ayat, the total ten. Or let's say, يعني, for example, زلزلت, or it's more than ten. Plus, you are safe that you will not be registered as the heedless people. If you recite 100 ayah, mashallah, you will be written as qanitin. You know, very, very easy 100 ayat. You know, Surah Al Waqi'ah, 96 short ayat. You add also, this is 100 ayat. Hmm. Yes, I'm talking about the minimum. Minimum, you one rakah, but of course, yani, try to pray like Ramadan. Eight rakah and less shifa water, like this. And you know, at the beginning, it will be difficult. Okay, and the, yani one of the scholars said, I struggled Qiyam al 10 years. Then I enjoyed Qiyam al-Layl the next 10 years. Is it a statement of Imam Shafi? It's like an arrow to the mist. It's like a famous saying of one of the scholars. About? Qiyam al is like an arrow that never misses. Like a, you know, it's. Siham al la tukhta. Yani the arrows at night cannot miss. Allah alam, they mean the dua. Allah alam, they mean the dua at night when you, you know, invoke Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the last part of the night, the, th the last third of the night. To the point. Does anyone have any questions for sure? Any, uh, anything happened in your dawah you'd like to mm. share with us? Hassam, anything here in the Zoom? You can check? No, I'm checking. Okay. Regarding the, the steps, let's say, or the order of steps that we went after someone accepts Islam. Mm. Let's say today he accepts Islam. Mm. Time for 
the question after the exception and the question of after all the So we leave that and do the prayer and then continue this discussion. Mm. Or uh, no, we can do all the discussions and the debate really in that and then start with the uh, so, yeah, and actually, you will not find Allah, I mean, not find in the Sunnah that the Prophet said you start with them the pillars of Salah, the pillars of Wudu. But uh, if he accepts, of course, you explain him and you chat with him about Islam. If he accepts the Shahada, if he uh, mentioned the Shahada, he's Muslim, then he has to do what the Muslim should do. So, if it is the time of Salah, you tell him about the Salah, the time of the Salah. Okay, yes, now he cannot recite maybe Surah Al-Fatiha. But if there is time, you tell him how to recite Surah Al-Fatiha. He can read it from uh, from the mobile or you write, write Surah Al-Fatiha on a paper uh, and to follow, follow you. If he cannot read Surah Al-Fatiha, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, you mention Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, La ilaha illa Allah, Akbar, La hawla, La quwata, La billah. Or yani, the scholars mention these details. And this is one of the points that it is needed for the da'iyah. Okay? Uh, he can maybe memorize one ayah. Imagine if someone memorizes one ayah. Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Okay, so we tell him, you repeat Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim seven times. Because Surah Fatiha seven times. Okay, like this. So that's why it is important for the guy to know, know to, to know the fiqh. So you, so you tell him, and you should be prepared for that. You should be prepared for that. If someone does it, <coughs> yani, uh, oh, I'm shocked. He, he accepted Islam and Islam. Why you are shocked? You should be prepared for that. Yeah. Right? Uh, okay, that was about this question. Mm. Uh, yes, okay, which was regarding after accepting Islam. Mm. Is it uh, must for a person to do ghusl? Uh, before even praying, or like because it's prayer time that's the important thing. Uh, regarding the ghusl for the new Muslim, uh, you know, this is a fiqh issue. Major scholars said it is mustahab, not wajib, it is recommended, not compulsory. Why? Because, uh, uh, yes, there is hadith, there, is, there are, I think, two hadith the Prophet said, do ghusl. Okay, but uh, the major scholars say it is not wajib, this order, not wajib. Why? Because there are other hadith the Prophet Sallallahu did not tell them to, to make ghusl, like uh, Makkah conquest. Many people accept Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu did not tell them, please take shower. Okay? Sheikh, you have encouraged us to seek knowledge as da'wis, but I have talked to other teachers and shaykhs. And sometimes they have recommended that uh, we do not look into certain things. Uh, some topics are too deep. Some knowledge requires too much learning mm. to take on without sufficient time. Mm. How do we tell, as people who are not educated, as we know, how do we tell what is good knowledge to learn and what is not within the scope of Islam? You mean for the da'i? Yeah. Okay, if, if, if I am a da'i, there are basics I have to learn. Tayyip, so the, like the the pillars of Iman, the pillars of Islam, I have to know these things. Uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, for example, if I have money, I have to learn the rules of zakah. If it is Ramadan, I have to learn the rules of Ramadan. If I'm going to Hajj, I have to learn the rules of Hajj. Uh, on the other hand, for me as da'wah, there should be the way of knowledge. There should be book of manners. And I read this book of manners. I should know what are the manners of Salam. The manners, uh, tickets of food and eating and drinking, the manners of friendship. And you read, you finish this book, yalla, the book of Sirah. Okay, the, uh, you finish the book of Sirah, uh, a book of Tafsir, something summarized. You start with something summarized, one volume, you know the Tafsir of Quran. So you have to take this. Yes, sometimes there, are, there is something deep. Maybe uh, there is an issue uh, about one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is the meaning of this hadith? And, a lot of discussion, or like this issue, this this, this topic. Should I do? Should the Muslim makes ghusl or not? Okay, a lot of discussion. What is uh, the ruling of Jum'a ghusl? Is it wajib or mustahab? Maybe there is research articles about this. Okay, so there are issues. Of course, it, a lot of discussion, but no doubt there are many simple things you need to learn. As I said, like the seerah. Read the seerah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the etiquettes, the akhlaq, 
okay and the, you know the ibadat the worship of qalb the heart uh, you know the heart worship and the heart diseases you should know these things so there, there is a lot to learn and with, it is not controversial it is straightforward and sorry when you learn more and the imam shafi said rahimahullah kulamma zadtu ilma zadtu ilman bi jahli he said when i learn more I realize that I am ignorant. But if you don't have knowledge, you think that I am the, the, the scholar of the world. Sheikh oh. Islam. Um, mm. um, you also mentioned in the beginning of the, uh, that we do not also judge the success of Dawah for number two. Mm. Uh, so, like, I'm often wondering. With what do we test the success like of our Dawah? Because not even from how much like how is it different because the Quran and Sunnah. The Quran and Sunnah. Am I following the Quran or Sunnah? Or not? This is this this is how you judge your success and your dawah. The number, the result, I don't know. We fasted Ramadan, accepted or not, I don't know. How to make sure that uh, I did well or not. Have I followed the Quran and Sunnah in my fast? When I was fasting, was I reading more Quran? Was I giving more charity? This is the, 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 the how to judge your uh, your fast. M my tongue was more uh, was under control or not? So I, I should not look at the number every time I check. I did seven Umrah. I did two Hajj. I gave seven hundred Shahada. You are pleasing yourself, yeah. Yeah. Is it right to answer when they ask? Is it? People, they are asking sometimes. Yeah. They are curious. How many shahada? How many shahada? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, when you read the the books of the Salaf of Salih, okay, you will find that we know how many rak'ah. Yani they mentioned that Imam Ahmed was doing 100 rak'ah. This Imam was reading Quran every three days. The Shafi was reading the Quran twice a day in Ramadan. Okay? You'll find something like this. So it depends who's asking and what is the purpose. Is it for the, sh for the media or not? So it depends. Okay? You should not uh, answer in any way. Okay? This is according to the wisdom. Okay. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm asking you. Uh, you are coming to uh, a center, da'wah center. So I like to know your your efforts in da'wah. And it is private. Yeah, it is written in a, in a, you know in the file. Different than someone, okay, me making a meeting with you on TV. Depends. Yeah. But even if you mention it is not haram, yeah. not haram. It depends your intention. You want to show off, or what? You should you just mention the car on the way. Um like um you know, even like I was saying to you before, I've been doing Dawah for like fifteen years. Mm. Yeah, you know, I've seen over a thousand people say the Shahada. Mm. All of a sudden you out of all of them is one that I feel confident in. Mm. And I feel that I'm Someone who's quite strict with the shahada, mm. I go through a lot of detail before taking the shahada. And even then, there's one I'm confident in. Mm. You know, like, um, the reality is, uh, you know, you don't know what's in someone's heart. Many people say it, they, they, it makes sense here. But you don't know what's in someone's heart. And when it comes to the crunch of it, which is submitting to Allah, and you have to pray five times a day, you have to give zakat. Uh, you know, the reality is that uh, a lot of them don't. You know, so uh, there's one thing to say it, uh, to, to declare it, but another thing to submit to it and, and mean it. Allah knows best about them. Mm. You know, so for me, it's like the numbers are irrelevant because I don't know what's in the heart. Mm. It's only Allah who guides anyway. Mm. So it's not the, me who guides the, them. So. Yes, this is a, this is. Very important point that for sure when people meet you and they know that you are working in the Dawah Center, the first question, how many Shahada? 
okay and can you tell us some stories about the new muslims they it should not be our focus what are the stories and you know people like something interesting and they want the drama to hear something crying the tears and the, these things habibi tell me something important how you convey how you how did you convey the message to him how did you start the conversation what uh, how many ayat you mentioned which ayat you used which hadith you used okay this this will be beneficial for for, for us yani uh, you know i uh, yani i like when you read the story of someone who accepted islam i like to know what made him to accept islam which ayah which hadith uh, which story from the seerah okay, why because i like to use it in da'wah to be beneficial but just to listen to the video wallah this is interesting oh she started to cry mashallah then what they are making this for the media allah yani allah alam about the intention okay, but it should not be our target the media Yes, this can happen. This can happen. Yeah, and for sure, some people, when they give the shah, they cry. Emotional. And for sure, I have a feeling because I'm a human being. But it should not be my, my target. The, the main thing for, for me, I make dua for him that Allah gives him the hidayah. Yani the Prophet said, made a good dua for the mother of Umm Huraira, Abu Huraira, when she accepted Islam. You know what was the dua? Okay. Hadith Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allahumma habibhuma ila mu'mineen wa habib al-mu'mineen ilayhima. When the mother of Abu Huray, she was anti-Islam, she was insulting, cursing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Very tough, saying very bad about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Abu Huray came crying, oh, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make a dua for my mother. He made a dua, she accepted Islam. Then he made another dua, oh Allah, make the believers to love Abu Huray and his mother. And make Abu Hurairah and his mother to love the believers. So this is a very important point when we give da'wah and someone accepting Islam or even not accepting Islam, make a du'a for him. If he is Muslim, if he accepts Islam, make a du'a to make him a strong Muslim. And if he did not accept, make him make, uh, make a du'a. May Allah expand his chest to accept Islam. Allahumma di dawsan wa'ati bihim. He sent someone, the Prophet sent him to give da'wah to those those a tribe so so he said they did not accept the prophet raised his hand they think that you make a dua against them he said may allah guide those uh, to bring them to me as muslims i think i should stop <laughs> because i have the flight <laughs> inshallah huh chai maghribi will chai turkey ليش؟ حياة صعبة جزاك الله خير جزاك الله خير جاهز يعني الشاي؟ يلا ويل ويت فور ذا تي ان شاء الله جزاك الله خير وصلي الله وسلم